Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to talk about chirality centers, which is an important topic when we're discussing enantiomers and diastereomers. The first thing that I want to do is talk about what is chirality. When something is chiral, it means that it has a mirror image where that mirror image does not coincide with the original compound or other real life item. So let's look at our hands. If you consider your hand, you have your hand and you take its mirror image. So imagine there's a mirror right here and I take the mirror image of my hand and it's my other hand. Then I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them on top of one another. And you know what? They don't coincide. They're not the same. It's the same reason you can't put your right glove on your left hand. It's the same reason that you can't put your uh, shoe, you know when a kid has the shoe on the wrong foot, right? Because the toes point the other directions. So chirality is talking about when you have a molecule or a real life item where its mirror image of the item is no longer the same as the original object. Now let's look at some real life examples and ask ourselves if these things are chiral or achiral. Keeping in mind that achiral, and when you put the A out in front of chiral, it means not chiral. So are the following objects chiral or not chiral? Well, shoes, we just said, absolutely, right? These things are chiral because if you were to put your left foot in your right shoe, you would notice, right? Even though your feet are mere images of one another. If you put them on top of one another, they don't coincide. Let's look at a baseball bat. Consider a baseball bat with no writing on it, right? This is something that if you made a mirror or a copy or a clone of your baseball bat by just putting a mirror off to one side and you magically got another baseball bat, you put them on top of one another, they're gonna be the same, right? So that would be a chiral. Staplers always are tricky because some students have seen some unusual staplers, but the one that's I am envisioning in my mind is one that's very simple. Um, there's no left-handed or right-handedness to it. So the one that I'm envisioning reminds me a lot of just, you know, something that's nice and plain. It comes down here. So the one that I'm reminded of is definitely uh, achiral, and I'm assuming that there's no writing or anything on these. A right-handed school desk. Yeah, that's totally chiral. Anything that has a handedness to it is going to be something that is chiral. So this one is also chiral. If you want to imagine it, what you can do is um, maybe draw a picture of the top part of a right-handed school desk. So your right-handed school desk is going to look something, you know, like this. And so your right-handed school desk, if you put a mirror right here, then the mirror would illustrate this. And now what you wanna do is mentally pick up this one and turn it to see if you can get them to coincide and you cannot. And when you're turning it, right, you're not flipping it over, you're picking it up out of the plane of the page and twisting it. Your gloves, these things are also going to be chiral because you can't put your right hand in your left glove. You'll know that it's on the wrong hand. What about in chemistry? In chemistry, what we find is that there's chirality centers. Now, chirality centers have all different kinds of names. Some people call them stereo centers. Some people call them stereogenic centers, right? Someone call them chiral centers. It's all the same thing. Well, it's technically not, but for your level, sure, let's just call it the same thing. So your chirality centers are going to have the two criteria that are listed below. One, you have to have an sp3 hybridized carbon. And two, you have to have four different groups attached to that carbon. Let's look at these examples. This first one is going to have a chirality center here where I put this asterisk. How do I know? Because I have one group here for the bromine. I have one group here for the methyl. I have one group here for the ethyl. And then my fourth group is that hydrogen that's not drawn. So I meet the criteria that I have four different groups attached. 
The other thing is that the carbon that I put an asterisk next to was sp3 hybridized. So yeah, this is totally a chirality center. If we look at the second one, students often want to call this carbon that I just put an asterisk next to a chirality center. But it's not technically a chirality center because if we look this way, you have a CH2, a CH2, a CH2. If you look this way, you have a CH2, a CH2, and then you share a CH2 at the end. Those two pathways are the same. So you have two of the same group right there. So this one is not chiral the way that it is drawn. Can we change it to make it chiral? Sure, we could absolutely do that. You could add another group. You could uh, put a pi bond in. So if I put a pi bond right here, then now we actually do have a chirality center. So I'm going to leave that asterisk there. This final one also gives people some trouble because what happens is once you start seeing these wedge and dash bonds, students are like, bam, that's a chirality center. I know because my teacher just put a wedge or dash bond there. Well, I mean, technically I could put a wedge or dash bond anywhere that is an sp3 hybridized carbon um, because that is trying to illustrate that you have a 109.5 degree bond angle. It just really is very common that when there's a chirality center, there also is a wedge or a dash bond. In this particular case, let's take notice that here, because there's nothing on the other side of that, that's a CH3. So that means that you have a CH3 there and there's a CH3 here. So you do not have four different groups attached to this carbon right here. And because you don't have four different groups attached, you do not have a chiral center. If we wanted to change this so that was a chiral center, we'd have to add something different. So maybe let's put an OH there and then that will create a situation where you have four different groups. You have an OH, you have a methyl, you have an ethyl, and then you have the hydrogen that isn't drawn. You need to be really good at skeletal notation in order for these to um, feel comfortable for you because otherwise people often forget that assumed hydrogen. What I want you to do now is go through and put an asterisk next to any chiral carbons. I have not put in wedges and dashes for those chiral carbons, but I want you to still look at them and decide, is this a chiral center, yes or no? Notice that you also can have no chiral centers in a molecule. So it is possible that I gave you an example or two that does not have any chiral centers. So in a moment, come back and let's compare some answers. All right, let's compare some answers. So the first one, there's no chiral carbons. You might look at it and kind of think right here that this is a chiral carbon, but it's not because that's an sp2 hybridized carbon. So no, it is not. The next two students tend to do quite well with the bottom row, this one down here, sometimes students will see that ring and go, oh, she just said rings, you know, have the same pathway. Ooh, but there's a double bond right there. And that makes this path and this path different from one another. Over in the very end, there's also no chiral carbon here because of that pathway idea, right? You might look at this and go, oh, that looks like there could be a chirality center there. But then you come around and say CH2, 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 and then you come this way, CH2, CH2, and then we share the same CH2. So we have two of the same group. So there are no chiral carbons here. So in the last video and this one, we looked at isomers, we defined chirality, and we found chiral centers. Next, we're going to keep working with those chiral compounds and talk more about enantiomers, diastereomers, and things like optical activity. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. This is Katoni signing out.